Well, how are you guys doing today? I just woke up. I got a little bit of fluffy hair going on here. It's a little puffy, which is fine. It is sprinkling outside. Do you see that sky? Do you see? Look right here. Do you see that? That's the color of the sky right now. It's white or gray. And I have been videotaping and taking pictures of the Department of Defense up in military airspace spraying chemtrails. It's not condensation. You know how when you have a glass of water and you put it on a glass shelf and it starts to get a little condensation, gets water and it gets like a ring of water. That's water. That's not chemtrails. When they are up there in the sky, you see white, looks like smoke, steam. It looks like aluminum particulates with strontium, barium, lithium. I'm looking outside right now because it's starting to dump. They are doing weather manipulation. I'm just saying. There's not a whole lot um, I can do about it because I've already tried contacting the Department of Defense, contacted the mayor, and they said, that's not our jurisdiction. Okay, so then I contacted the congresswoman. That's not our jurisdiction. I go, yeah, it's going to be when the stuff comes down. Well, you need to contact the military. This is far beyond commercial airspace. And they led me on rabbit trails to go contact OSHA. I'm like, are you an employee or an employer? I go, no. Well, then that's not our jurisdiction. So frustrating. And this has been years. I'm not just saying days. I'm saying years. I've known about this for the longest time. And many people still go, oh, no, that's condensation. That's when, you know, the engine and it's cold up there and it makes steam and it makes water. I'm like, no, that would fall down because water is heavier than the ether. That is a mist that they are spraying and they do it under the guise. Pretend. Pretense. I hate pretense. I really do. They do it under the guise of globe, you know, geoengineering, saying that we live on a globe, it's spinning out of control, it's chasing the sun, it's going out into the expanse of the universe. I just got this from my neighbor who was clearing out his storage thing. To infinity and beyond. This is such a bunch of bullshit. Like Buzz Aldrin, as if they went to the moon in space. Infinity and beyond is just ridiculous. It's so stupid. <laughs> I'm just saying this is so stupid. I did get my sociology degree and psychology and humanities and art. And I did study media manipulation. When I found out that we did not land on the moon, and then I had to present it in front of 50 of my peers. I mean, give me a couple of weeks here so that I can, you know, get over my trauma like real fast. I can present it to you, get real. It was difficult. I mean, come on. You know, you should have seen everybody's mouths like, oh, what? Huh? <laughs> They're making me look like I need some type of a psych evaluation. <laughs> I'm like, no, you guys, we've been majorly duped big time. It's so secret society. It's disgusting. And people die because they expose stuff like that. But anyways, I digress. 
So I wanted to talk about life. I wanted to talk about life instead of all this death this morning. I want to look up um, the Ten Commandments. But first, I have to find it. Where are we going to find it? Let's look for it. Let's just go to the government here. What are the Ten Commandments? Let's pick one. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. I know. They said in college, don't be going with Wikipedia. But let's just see what they're telling everybody and the ones who do go there. Let's see what they're saying about it. Come on. Ten Commandments. Hebrew, also known as the Decalogue, Deca meaning ten, are a set of biblical principles relating to ethics and worship that play a fundamental role in Judaism and Christianity. The text of the Ten Commandments appears twice in the Hebrew Bible at Exodus 22 through 17. So you can look that up in your Bible, whichever version you have, and Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 21. Scholars disagree about when the Ten Commandments were written and by whom, with some modern scholars suggesting that the Ten Commandments were likely modeled on the Hittite and Mesopotamian laws and treaties. According to the book of Exodus in the Torah, the Ten Commandments were revealed to Moses at Mount Sinai and inscribed on two tablets of stone kept in the Ark of the Covenant. So you can just uh, Google the Ten Commandments if you want to read more. I'm not going to read all of this because I really want to get to the actual Ten Commandments. Hey, let me just see this. Though the Masoretic text, you know, the Masoretes came and changed. have to unmute myself. I just had gotten to the Ten Commandments, and I want to read what they are. So let's read them. Okay, number one, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shall have no other doctors and scientists and educators before me. I mean, no other gods before me. Thou shall not make unto thee any graven image. Hmm. Would that be something that you carve in stone? Graven. Dead. Oh, dead image. Is that what graven means? Dead? You mean like a Christmas tree? Like it's the image of something that's alive, but it's chopped off at the base in like a little tiny bit of sugar water. And then you decorate it and pretend like it's totally alive and it's so beautiful and you sing songs to it. Yeah, that's, that's a dead image. Mm-hmm. Don't be doing that. You should not make unto yourselves any dead image. Thou shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So let's just go over what is name. Name means character and function. So when you act outside of the character and function of whose name you're supposed to be coming in, that is blaspheming the name, the name, the character and the function of your family. Here's an example. You go to the store with your little child and your child wants a toy like, I want this toy. I want to go from infinity and beyond to the moon. You know, it's, it's a lie. We didn't go to the moon. We did not. And this is just to make money. It's to sell you some graven image. It's dead. It's 
Somebody just gave me that the other day. <laughs> That's a dead thing. That probably is a graven image right there. I think so. Yeah, that's what that is. Anyways, I got distracted. Uh, oh, oh, that's right. Okay, so you're in the store and some kid is saying, I want this, give it to me. Yeah. And you know, this is your family. And everybody's looking at you like, don't you know how to control your child? What? That um, behavior that your child is acting out is as a reflection of you and how you parent you know so that child when they're acting all tantrum and stuff they're really uncovering your your character your family name it's blaspheming the name it really is like giving a bad image to the the family name so when we say that we're coming in the name of the Lord, we better be coming in character and function. That is coming in the name that's putting on the robe of right understanding. You know, you put on his commandments and put on his attributes, like you would put on a jacket or something. You're putting it on. You're wearing as a covering you're you're not naked you're clo you're fully clothed like that so when you take the function the character and the function of the almighty and you act out of sorts out of his character that's coming in in vain. That's coming for nothing. So that's what that means. And God is not, the word God is a title. It's not his name. Like saying king. Now maybe someone would name their dog or their child king. That could be cool. But... That's not a name, that's a title. So when people say, gee, damn it, you know, that's not taking the name of the Lord God in vain. I suppose that would be taking his title, the CEO, the King, God. But that those are titles. So when you take the name of the Lord, it's like you got you're wearing his name as a covering, you know, 